up? Welcome to Sandals and Steel Toes. My name is Lex and I am so delighted to have you with me today for our second garden tour of 2020. I can't even believe that it was only 17 days ago when we had the last garden tour and it was so cold. I think that day was in the upper 30s and the day before we had a frost, uh, there was snow and everyone was so upset about the constant cold weather and just being so anxious to get out into the garden and you know we were all waiting to do that. Um, and then it seems like overnight it just heat came out of nowhere and uh, here where I live in Ohio zone 6a we've been experiencing super warm weather all week um, Memorial Day weekend we were in the upper 80s and even this week I think a couple from a couple places topped out close to 90 um, so it's been so hot and humid all of a sudden and we ha are having no rain I finally gonna rain tomorrow so it's been really dry I've been a busy little bee out here in the garden um, doing all kinds of things. The whole garden looks completely different and I'm going to show you as uh, we walk around today. Super excited. Thank you for being here with me and let's go check everything out. So here she is, the gorgeous garden that I am lovingly naming the Sandbox. Obviously, sandals and steel toes. Also, uh, our last name is Sandella. Fits pretty good. Have a really sandy loam soil here where I live. Welcome to the sandbox. And I do you wanna have a big announcement about our beautiful piggy, Miss Wilma? So Miss Wilma has been moved. She has a beautiful calla lily that I found yesterday. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's Wilma's flower. That's what she has to have and it's a perennial so it'll come back uh, every year and there is Wilma and her beautiful new flower. We now have four arches. Um, this is made with the cattle panel fencing that you can get at local uh, tractor supply stores or other places like that. Um, at the beginning of the season I was looking up how to trellis plants. And what I found and came across was a video from uh, YouTube Roots and Refuge Farm. And it was how to build a trellis for $30 or less. And that really got me going. And I will post a link below to that video. Um, but a lot of the inspiration for my garden I did get from Roots and Refuge Farm. It's just a wonderful YouTube channel. And I would recommend that to anyone who wants to learn about gardening. Over on this side is the boys, my son, Anthony and Lucas. This is their kids garden. So they worked with me this week to plant everything that's currently in there. We have a banana pepper, a cucumber, a zucchini. Um, Lucas, my little one, he wanted beets. So we got beets for him. I have cow peas uh, all along this fencing too and along the poles. So those are gonna grow up those. And over here, there's Swiss chard, uh, carrots, and a baby sugar baby watermelon there, cauliflower. Luki was a little bit disappointed that I wasn't growing cauliflower. Um, so when I went to a local nursery the other day, I picked up some cauliflower starts and he was so excited about it. And we have basil and that is a cherry tomato over there and then we have kentucky wonder beans along the fence and the poles on this side um, there should be some sunflower seeds in there too so we will see how those come up and hopefully the boys will do a good job maintaining their garden i have a feeling i'm gonna have to help them a little bit but it's part of the teaching process that we're doing this year so my mother, Susan, and I are working on uh, creating new, some new uh, gar raised garden bed boxes for these um, t extra cattle panel fences that we now have. Um, so this is a work in progress and I did just order some seeds today. So over here in this first bed is the broccoli. I am having some pest damage. You can see there. So I did spray neem oil on all of these today. Um, so I'm hoping that helps. I started all of these broccolis that I have from seed and I'd be super bummed if they all die because of pest damage. So I'm keeping a close eye on those. 
on this whole second trellis here is I have Kento beans and Kentucky Wonder beans so the whole thing's gonna fill, be filled up with beans and the asparagus has been wonderful I have been harvesting um, two times a week this would actually be third if I harvested tonight there's quite a few spears they're a little bit hard to see uh, with this lighting but there are a lot um, the asparagus is coming up so great oh hey we got a pinto bean actually that's a Kentucky Wonder bean I I tried doing um, alternating Kentucky beans and pinto beans so along the the tall post here will be the Kentucky Wonder beans green beans and then anything that comes up in the middle here are the pinto beans because um, I have read that pinto beans are half runners so they wouldn't be as long but those just came up I swear they were not there <laughs> earlier today so happy birthday little beans anyways back to the asparagus so this I am having also on the asparagus though some pests that I need to identify what these are so these little bugs are mating on the asparagus and I keep coming by and flicking them off I did also spray this with neem oil today they're still on it but they are all over my asparagus I gotta look into how to control that issue I can still harvest it at this point I did let a couple of them just go ahead and continue growing and didn't cut them off um, particularly that one because it's really skinny so have to deal with that over in this bed was more broccoli go ahead and buy at the nursery these uh, brussels sprouts so these two are brussels sprouts and look really great and then that's a red acer cabbage over there two of those and honestly i'm kind of worried about some of these cold weather crops that i've i've gotten like the broccoli and these cabbage and um, the brussels sprouts because it is so hot and you know with it being so hot i'm afraid it's not going to grow they're going to bolt right away and we literally did not even have a real spring it went from snowing to two weeks later 90 degrees so i i'm not sure what's going to happen it did look like in the 10 day forecast is going to cool down next week and we're going to have some colder nights of like mid 40s so there is that i mean we just might be going through a really hot um a heat spell right now and it's gonna kind of cool back down to what it would normally be um, but I am a little bit nervous for those so we'll see how they go but on trellis number three uh, we're gonna be growing the sugar baby watermelons and cucumbers are still fairly tiny and the cucumbers over here so right there here and here those are taking some time to um, kind of grow after transplanting so I will likely go ahead and sow some seeds in there too uh, just in case these ones don't make it but it'll be okay either way um, if they all go ahead and live because it's a succession planting meaning um, once these cucumbers stop producing after a point there will be new newer ish cucumber plants that come up that will continue to produce for me uh, after the first round is done and the carrots are looking so lovely I have thinned them a few different times and I think I think the spacing is finally pretty good for these so I don't have to thin them anymore which I was always sad to thin them um, because they you know I don't like thinning things I want everything to live and grow uh, but look at these radish. I have been waiting to do a garden tour before I harvested any of the radish because, I mean, they just look so nice. Um, I was really worried that I wasn't going to have the radish growing because they took a really long time. Um, I think in my last tour, I had said that they were supposed to have been done by that point, um, 29 days, and they were not. Um, so here we are about, like I said, 15 17 days later and we have radish and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy out. Oh, look at that. First radish of the season. He's so pretty. So I think this is the, the point in the video where most people would like take a bite of their um, their little harvest and try it out. Um, I grew radishes before and I did not like the way they tasted. 
but I never tried to roast them and I've heard a lot of great things about uh, roasting radishes so I am going to opt to cook this first before I eat it um, plus I'm not into eating all that dirt I don't know if you can see all that but it is really cute and I'm gonna take this in with me tonight and um, experiment with this guy before I pull any more out but I will need to pull a lot of them out this week because they're this good size and if you let them go too long um, they get kind of pithy inside and they don't taste very good so uh, younger radishes are the way to go from what I've read. These peas are looking really nice. Still no flowers yet. Um, they're really good at making leaves and but yeah no flowers yet so not sure. It's over here. Peas are all looking really nice as well. They're growing. Over here is the potato patch. So we've got all kinds of good stuff growing in here. Um, this row is where I put my red pantry potatoes. I had a bag of potatoes that had sprouted and I went ahead and planted them to see what would happen. Nothing's popping up from those yet. Uh, this row here are red Norland potatoes. Uh, the tubers that I had were super, super long on these, so these were the, these were the winners on the race of who was going to emerge first, and they are looking beautiful. Um, I did get some straw yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting straw around everything. And then I have sweet potatoes here. So they're looking good when I planted them. Their vines looked not great, but uh, this is all new growth. So they're looking really pretty all along here. The sweet potatoes. This one looks a little dead. I do have a few extras in the house, so we'll be all right. I can just replace it. But yeah, all the sweet potatoes are looking really nice. And then on the other side, these three rows here are Kennebec white potatoes and the two rows over there are white superior potatoes and these are taking a little bit to pop up. I thought I saw one earlier that looked like it was coming up. Oh, here they are. Yeah, so we got some Kennebecs coming up now too. Okay, we'll walk on the other side of the garden. So over here is so much happening. So these rows all in here are pepper plants. So the first one are banana peppers. And then going down the next row, I have two hot pepper jalapenos. And then I've got these, oh, three jalapenos. Three jalapenos, uh, two bell peppers, which are purple beauty really excited to see what those look like and I got these pepper plants from a nursery um, my pepper plants I started from seed are these little tiny guys up here the banana peppers um, and also the corbachi peppers I started from seed and they were really tiny um, but I was like you know what they weren't growing in their pots very well so I'm like I'm just gonna put them out here and see what they do and they are doing okay they're growing so good going on those and then over here we have uh, two green bell peppers this one is a sweet pepper yellow sparkler I'm really not sure what that is but the name intrigued me um, so we'll see what those come out to be uh, cayenne peppers because I do want to try drying them and making my own cayenne pepper this year and then inferno hot peppers i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with those either i don't like super super hot things um but again they look really pretty at the nursery so i want to try them out and then the row behind it not sure what i'm putting there i do have um eggplant starts but they are really tiny too so i have to think about what i'm putting here um this row this back row here is going to be the Jacobs cattle bush beans. So I direct sowed those, nothing sprouted yet, um, but I only put the seeds in about four days ago. So I'm just watching those closely to see some germination happening. And then all along this strip and then on the opposite side as well are all gonna be sunflowers. Um, so I just put those in yesterday. I'm really happy with how the tomato section is turning out. 
Um, all of these tomatoes in this area were started by seed um, and I transplanted them. So I'm really proud of how well they're doing um, considering uh, years past where I try to do tomatoes. Um, they, they did not fare well from starting from seed. So these guys are looking really nice. There's a little bit of stress from the transplant, but I am uh, really trying to keep everything watered really well in this heat and I did get straw. So I'm gonna put that on tomorrow probably um, to help keep the moisture in even better. Got going here. This first row is gonna be all of the cherry tomatoes. I did leave some space on the end for my indigo apple cherry tomatoes. They just were really tiny and not ready to transplant, but I think I might go ahead and try anyways this week um, because I'm getting a little impatient. So if you recall from any of my other videos, I did start a handful of seeds about a month later than everything else. Also it was the end of April and they are Oh, really small they're taking longer to grow I feel like than my first round of seeds and I think what happened is I use a different kind of potting soil for the second round of seeds it raised bed garden mix and I think it was the wrong thing to use because the first round of seeds I did a typical potting mix um, I didn't think it was gonna make a difference when I went ahead and potted those into that soil, but apparently it did, and I think the growth was stunted, so they're a little bit behind even, even more than I had anticipated that they would be at this time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and transplant a lot of those, I think just this week in the ground. I, I'll probably do most of them and see what grows and, and hope for the best. So on the next row are my Roma tomatoes. I do want to learn how to can, how to make sauce and how to can it. And if it works out and I can figure it out and it's not too difficult, then next year I'll plan to do a lot more tomatoes for canning. Um, but this year I didn't want to overwhelm myself too much with so many tomatoes because my family doesn't like to eat raw tomatoes too much. I mean, I, I'm fine with it, but the three boys in my house don't. So I didn't want to have too many tomatoes and be overwhelmed with how do I can them and and just feel like it was too much. So we'll see how it goes. Um, this row I have the beefsteak and Rutger tomatoes. And so I left room two rows back here for the rest of the tomatoes, which like I said, needed a little bit more time. Um, and I'll put those in this week. So I just want to talk about for a minute how cool these fence panel trellises are. We're going to be using these for the climbing, vining, squashes, winter squashes. And what they are made out of um, from a dog kennel. Uh, my mom had a dog kennel for several years that she didn't use and it just was set up in her backyard. And you know, she's like, why don't we go ahead and use these for fencing for the garden? I'm like, absolutely so um, we went ahead and put these up so they're just like at an angle secured with zip ties and t-posts on each side but they like look super cool and like when the sun's hitting them a certain way they kind of look like solar panels um, so I'm really excited to see how those take off and how all the squash grow up them these are my spaghetti squash I started from seed and transplanted they are looking pretty good um, this is an heirloom butternut rogosa, so I did a rec sewed those. It's like a butternut, but um, larger and it's got a bumpy rind and they're supposed to be much more flavorful. Here's my little tiny pumpkin patch. So these ones are transplanted. I started from seed as well. Um, the ones here on the fence are Connecticut field pumpkins. So I'm gonna let them crawl up and and outward and then this guy back here I had one big max pumpkin seed left from a few years ago when I tried this and he looks great I'm really happy with how he's looking right now and this guy I'm just gonna allow to ramble out into the yard my summer squash is all along here so I've got four zucchinis and then four yellow squash on that side when I was designing the garden and had my rake and my shovels, um, I came up with this. I came up with what you see behind me here. And this is going to be my little sitting area where I can come and sit and enjoy the garden um, because I have been working my butt off 
to get this garden to, way, <laughs> to look the way it does right now. It's gonna be kind of my little serenity space to just enjoy and relax and sit and watch everything grow. I did plant some okra along in here. I'm really excited to see how those get because the okra get so huge. Um, and I'm gonna have one over here and it's gonna have beautiful hibiscus like flowers on it and it's just gonna look really pretty to just sit here and stare at them. So I have another butternut squash on this side and then I did direct sow some Canada crookneck heirlooms. They look really awesome. They're like a yellow squash but they're well, think of a Canadian goose. <laughs> so one, I have sweet meat squash, so no germination yet. Birdhouse gourds, I did start these ones from seed. I only had two of them, um, but they are looking really good. This is gonna be another really big one. Um, I apologize, I'm not gonna say this right, but Geet Oko Soman, it's a Baker Creek heirloom. It's huge, it's really big. So this would be another one that I would allow to ramble out into. It's so humid out right now. I'm glistening. And I'm just <sighs> walk through the perennial garden areas. So the herb spiral is starting to take off finally. Um, so I have all kinds of herbs in here: mint, oregano. I got a thyme. Um, just some babies that I just got from the nursery. The big one there is tarragon. Um, I had a, a pest problem in my lettuce area here at the top. My diva princess cat decided to make a home in it, so um, we stuck a bunch of sticks in there to keep her out, and it seems to be working. And I have arugula and parsley and sage, which is starting to blossom, um, and cilantro and a whole bunch of basil sprinkled out through here. If you go back to uh, one of my first videos that I've posted, when I was mulching this garden, it looked so bare. And you were probably thinking like, why is she putting all this mulch down? There's nothing in here, it looks awful. Well, this is what perennials do. I mean, they die back in the winter, but they come back with a vengeance. <clears throat> and this year, my perennials are insane. I mean, they are taking over everywhere. But look at these iris. They're so pretty. So I know it looks like a lot is going on in this garden and you might think about all the cost involved with having a perennial garden. And if you're starting from scratch and you don't have any help, it could become costly. But I would like to offer some advice. So probably 80% of everything in this perennial garden space um, was split or propagated from my mother's house. Uh, when I moved here four years ago, she was splitting everything like crazy and helping me put this garden together. And it has just multiplied um, so quickly, so beautifully. And now I'm at a point where um, a lot of the plants in here are kind of taking over their space as well and popping up in other areas of the garden that um, they weren't planted in because they're just reseeding themselves and sending uh, roots under the ground and they're coming up all over the place. Um, so I would encourage you if you want to have a perennial garden, uh, put the word out there that you would like to split or propagate plants from someone that you know, a friend or a family member, um, maybe local organizations, churches, I mean, wherever it may be, um, I'm sure you can find a local person around you who would be more than happy to share plans with you. Um, and then you can also give back in the future as well. It's a really great way to share beauty with your friends and your neighbors. Um, so I would just encourage you to ask, you know, bring a shovel and, and head over there, you know, split some plants. Um, so many perennials can be split into uh, just a smaller plant divided um, when the time is right. Uh, I'm actually going to post a, another video this week where my mom uh, talks about irises and how to divide those. Um, so check that out and just know that you know a garden like this doesn't have to be super expensive. Um, just f find your community and, and ask around and you will find people who are more than willing to help you. And just for an example, all of these here are black-eyed Susans. And I think when we started, that was there, and maybe just a small clump here. But these are just 
taking off and spreading all over the place. The really beautiful lilies that you see at your nurseries, that kind of like exotic, I mean, those multiply like crazy. I planted one bulb there uh, a year ago and I've got all these little baby ones coming up. So that'll just keep growing. You know, hostas, they get really big and can split, split and divide those really easily. Um, this plant here, I believe it's called a liatris. I'm still, I need to identify it correctly as soon as it blossoms, but it has really tall, beautiful purple flowers that kind of look like red hot pokers, but they're purple. Um, and those are just all over the place too. Um, we've already dug some up. <laughs> a lot of things in perennial gardens get super big in a short amount of time and you can split them. Um, what I did is I took a lot of stuff from the garden space right behind me and, and planted a whole bunch in here um, this earlier this spring, those black eyed Susans, just so that this area could get filled in. So, you know, even if you have one area of your yard pretty established and you're thinking about having another garden space, just take what you already have from your yard, just divide it and transplant and you can just keep doing that over and over and over again and you have just big gorgeous flowers all around your yard at no extra cost. Pine look really really nice. I am not seeing if these are gonna flower go this year. Oh wait. Oh yes. Okay look at that. Where is it? This is gonna make the most beautiful purple flower in the world. I love lupine so much. It didn't flower last year and this is gonna be show-stopping. I can't wait to show you. So I have another video on my channel about how to plant a bleeding heart. Um, it's a really beautiful plant that will make these gorgeous little teardrop shaped pink flowers in the springtime. Um, I got the bare root uh, in April and I went ahead and planted it in my garden um, and on April 30th so that was about a month ago um, I posted a video about how to plant it the correct way because what I ended up doing was planting the bare root upside down I was confused on how it was supposed to go um, but I wanted to give an update on how that is doing and what the growth is looking like um, after I corrected it so this is what a month later looks like of the bleeding heart that I planted upside down and then I re and then I pulled it out and then I put it the right way um, so it's looking really good the one on my other side garden is not looking this good this one looks really fantastic so I think I think she'll I think she'll live and she'll do just fine strawberries are looking good they had beautiful blossoms last week and now the blossoms are falling off and they are creating fruit. There's a really beautiful green one right there. So another week or so, we should start seeing some red strawberries. This is my side perennial garden that looks out from my sink window. So I wash dishes and just stare at my flowers. This is blossoming. I don't know what it's called, but it's really pretty. I did buy this one, um, I think last year. It was like a $5 plant sale. It was really great. So this one's looking nice. Um, this one's the other bleeding heart. So that one's considerably smaller than the other one I have, but it's still growing. So that's good. And peonies, hydrangea. These are those really tall orange lilies. Some people call them ditch lilies. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep them in here after this year because they are just taking up too much space. Um, but this is like an example of something that you know, it gets too big for a garden space. Um, I can pull it out, I can divide it, and I can, you know, keep the smaller portion here or move it um, and give the rest to a friend who wants to start a perennial garden. Um, and there's no extra cost, just a little bit of labor, which, you know, I'm fine with. If a friend wants to help too, that's even better. Uh, Azalea is in here. So I, I might have done the same thing with the hollyhock that I did with the bleeding heart at least I thought I did yeah look at that I did so when I planted this hollyhock um, it had been weeks and nothing had happened so probably two weeks
weeks after I planted it, I pulled this root out and I flipped it upside down and I replanted it and I didn't think anything was gonna happen, but look, looks like there's a leaf growing off of it now, so I think it's gonna grow, which means my other hollyhock plants on the other side garden were upside down because I only flipped the two on this side to see, to like do an experiment. I don't know what's wrong with me. Like Shirley, I, I feel like I can't be the only person out there that has such a hard time distinguishing which is the right way uh, a bare root goes into the ground. Like I messed up with the bleeding heart, but I fixed that right away. I thought I had the hollyhocks right, I really did, but I, I think I had them upside down too. I'm gonna tell you, these companies that sell these plants, they need to have better instructions on their packaging for people that are trying to figure out how to do some of this stuff. <laughs> well, friends, that is going to be it for this garden tour, the second garden tour of 2020. It is May 27th. And you can see just how much has changed in really a short period of time. I mean, when I did this walkthrough 17 days ago, it looked completely different bare cold um, and there is color and life everywhere and it's really exciting and I can't wait to show you more as it continues to grow and and get bigger so this was really fun today um, I enjoyed this tour a lot more than the first one and I think hereafter it's just gonna keep getting better as as we go on so uh, thank you guys so much. I would really appreciate you um, giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment. Um, I really feel encouraged by reading the comments that are left to me. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.